Greetings and a peaceful, productive, progressive and prosperous new year to all. This year, I believe, will be a year of great challenge. Challenge which we can conquer if we are strong, but which will conquer us if we are weak. Government and ourselves will have to act with integrity, def determination, vision, efficiency, compassion, and respect for the rule of law. Government will have to take some tough decisions and perform its duties in a more business-like manner. And we the people will have to accept greater responsibility as citizens. We depend too much on government, not just the small people, but the big ones too. Too much sense of entitlement and underproductivity. We need to stop that. These challenges will break us if we are not strong. And I'm going to give you some illustrations of situations which, if not tackled with strength and purpose, will put this country in boiling water. And nobody will be excluded from that. So the challenges can break us, or we can use these challenges for us to break records. The choice is in our hands, the hands of the government and the hands of the people. Now, why would I be talking about challenges? Happy New Year, bright New Year, everything pretty. Everything is not pretty. And the best time to speak about challenges is when you're starting something, not when you're halfway through it. Let me explain some of these challenges. At budget time, while the contents of the budget address are important, I don't think that enough of us take time to look at the report of the Director of Audit. At budget time, the Minister of Finance publishes the budget address for the upcoming year so that last month, Dr. Drew will have presented the budget for 2024, while the Director of Audit submitted her report on the accounting for the fiscal year before 2023, which was the year 2022. And this is how it works. I'll be happy to share a copy of her report with you. WhatsApp me at 662-4921. Give me your email if you want it sent by email, and I'll send it to you either by WhatsApp or by email. Here are some of the matters of concern raised in the report of the Director of Audit. And these are challenges for us. For the year 2022, Parliament had approved a budget for $952 million. But on top of that, the government, through appropriation and supplementary warrants, pulled out another $432 million from the public purse. This increased the original budget by 45%. Not 4.5 or 10% or 15, 45%. If you are budgeting something and you have to go beyond that by 45%, in the absence of some calamity or other, then you are doing something that is wrong. And here's what the director of audit had to say. This blow up of 45%, as she said, was not in compliance with section 32 subsection 1 of the Finance Administration Act which places a limit of 25% increase on the annual estimates. And she pointed also to appropriation warrants that had been presented successively year after year for the same items and wondered why, if you're going to be taking money for these items every year, why not include them in the original budget? I am asking, was there a smartness in that? She said on that particular point, and I quote her, the credibility of the budget is at stake if programs continue to be implemented year after year without being included in the budget. The Drew administration has to exercise fiscal prudence and efficiency and insist on prudence and efficiency throughout the length and breadth of the public service. And who can't perform at that level must be removed from the public service. That is our money. The government is the people's government. It must be efficiently run. At last, the office of the Prime Minister went over budget in 2022 by $31 million. What was the explanation? To pay due diligence to the CIU, Citizenship by Investment Unit, on Citizenship by Investment Program applications. But the applicants paid due diligence. So why did the government have to go and appropriate extra money if it already received the due diligence money? 
except that maybe it didn't receive it. And there is talk going around that one particular developer was not paying the government fees and holding the money and nothing was being done about it under the previous administration. The Ministry of Infrastructure went over by $74 million. Remember, elections were in August. And coming up to elections, governments tend to spend money like a drunken sailor. There are a number of other areas of concern raised by the Director of Audit, concern which will pose challenges for all of us in 2024 in terms of fiscal responsibility and fiscal space to carry out programs. I will raise only some of her concerns. You can read them in her report if you want to. In 2022, the Citizenship by Investment Program raised $724 million, or 64% of the total government revenue. In 2023, this figure will go down, in my estimation, by about $200 million, to say $500 million. And in 2024, my guesstimate is it will go down to maybe $300 million, which is $400 million less than it would have been in 2022. This exposes grave challenges for the country. Firstly, we need to know if the CBI can be kept alive and revived. We know the government has taken steps. Has it been cleaned up? Have culprits been brought to justice? Will they be brought to justice locally? Will the director of public prosecutions, the special prosecutor, be given a free hand to do what he thinks he needs to do in defending and protecting the public interest through the law? And even if we revive the CBI, is it wise to depend so heavily on one industry, especially given the bad experience we've had over the centuries with heavy reliance on a single industry in our economies? Will the waste and corruption attached to this industry over the years be subject to a clinical forensic audit locally and stopped? What will the government do about these white elephant CBI projects that have made tens or hundreds of millions of dollars for foreigners and a handful of their treacherous and greedy local friends who need to face justice, all of them, at the expense and loss to you, the people of St. Kitts, to the tune of as much, by my guesstimate, of about $8 billion? How will government find short, medium, and long-term alternatives to avoid the country falling into economic, social, and political boiling water. How will the government and the country sustain itself? Are these challenges or just this light talk? Where will it find $800,000 a day to pay wages and salaries and other emoluments in the public service? Where will it find about the same $800,000 a day to cover the social safety net programs that it covers? Where will it find the guts to tell businesses that it can and will no longer keep their long-term workers on step and that the free labor is done in those cases. Step was pet before and then yes before that, going back to 2009. That's how long it started. And there are workers who have been on it for the last 14 years. A program that we were told had been designed to work as an incubator program to temporarily help employers and employees startup businesses particularly, has been totally abused at the cost of the public. This is a failed program. And we've heard that the government is going to try to tidy them all up. Talk is cheap, we want action. This is a good time for the country to get a proper dose of reality. But will the government be up to facing the challenge? Will the government now be quick, calculating, visionary and efficient? in these things and secure well-chosen foreign capital investment into our economy and encourage at the same time vigorously local investment and empowerment like us owning the solar plant and not the Swiss people. And by the way, speaking of the solar plant, I am told that the figure has now reached 80 million US dollars. How did it get there? The people need to know. I'm not accusing anybody of anything. I'm not against anybody. All I'm saying is as a citizen, as a taxpayer, I have a right and a responsibility to ask questions and to know. If you don't believe you have that right, then that's for you. Government needs to stir up economic activity, protecting locals in businesses and in jobs. 
I know in jobs, locals are being abused terribly, marginalized, and people in the public sector are assisting in this marginalization of local people. The government needs to collect the $68 million owed to the Inland Revenue Department, mostly by large and medium-sized businesses who are challenging and running the clock on the government. That money can be used for the hospital, for education, for water, for energy, for food, for infrastructure. Everybody must pay their share. It's not just the poor people who are capitalizing on government's largesse. It's the big ones too. And they go and get, of course, all kinds of fancy fiscal incentive holidays and so on. Never pay anything. Never pay anything. Christoph Harbour is a case in point. The government needs to improve the public service and create opportunities to make the private sector a better alternative for jobs. Legislate private sector pension plans to augment social security so that by age 50, people can retire from their first job, get a second lease in life, get a pension and a gratuity, invest in their pension funds and 62 or whatever the increased age is. And that is something the government has to do. It has to fix the social security set up in order to protect it. It has to take these steps. It has to face these challenges. The public service, to a large extent, is a place where people clock in at 8, go get a bite to eat, spend a quarter of the time on the phone. They go and come as they like, very underproductive. I'm not saying the majority of them, but too many. And a lot of it has to do with politics and patronage. So I'm asking if the Drew administration has what it takes to clean up the underproductivity the politicization and the wastage and corruption in the public service in 2024. Can we afford for the government not to do that? A few will be mad, but the majority will benefit. You have to make hard decisions, Dr. Drew. This is a hard ball you're playing and you're the leader, you're the captain. Let's look now at the amount of debt. This is in the direct of audits report that the government has guaranteed up to 2022 for governmental entities in St. Kitts and in Nevis. Guaranteed means that if the government entity or the NIA does not pay, the federal government has to. The figure up to 2022, and I'm sure it's a lot more now, was about $600 million. Frigate Bay Corporation owing $36 million. Development Bank owing $101 million. Not to mention the $130 million that the Development Bank owes to Social Security. National Housing Corporation owes the government $146 million. And this is mostly through bad governance from the day it was established under the ministerial leadership of Timothy Harris and with so many homeowners not being made to pay their mortgages and politicians doing nothing about it. They prefer to get the vote and have the country suffer fiscally and economically and socially than to demand of the constituents that you pay your mortgage. We have not encouraged our people. While it has been great to give people the opportunity for homes, we've not encouraged homeowner and personal responsibility. Will the Drew government face this challenge this year and be able to collect so that those debts which are guaranteed by the government for national housing and these other entities will go down and improve the government's fiscal and economic position? Those things have to be done or else we're going to be boiled. The situation is to burden some on a small government in a small country, in a small economy like ours. Not sustainable, dangerous. And statutory corporations and other government entities simply have to be better and more professionally run. Major challenge for the Drew administration. And remember, CBI revenues are not increasing, they're going down. Then there is Christoph Harbour and Ketishan Hill, both being projects that can miraculously transform this country and empower our people. Both need to be addressed urgently and radical changes are required to do so. This critical importance is underscored by the fact, again, that CBI receipts will be down. And in any case, I believe that with CBI receipts being good for the country and many years of good collections, successive governments have failed to capitalize on that revenue and to use it to transform and solidify our economy and our society. So bad governance and corruption of the past now force the need for extra good governance on the government of today and the killing of corruption. Now, this is a major challenge. Is the Drew administration up to it? Will the challenge break us or will it cause us to be strong and break records? 
And this brings me to the last challenge of the death from me. Mind you, there are lots more in the direct of audits report and otherwise, but I leave you to think and speak of them. The Integrity and Public Life Commission is missing a member. This needs to be remedied without delay. In addition, there are, I'm told, about 150 public officials who are obligated to file under the IPL law declarations of personal word to the commission. I'm told that no more than a third of them have done so. There is a heavy fine, I think it is $30,000, and a prison term of up to five years for people who fail to file these declarations without good reason. The deadline was July of last year, extended to December, and still January 2024. Most of them have not filed. They can't claim ignorance. Are they being arrogant? These are people who occupy the top positions in the public service. And you have every right to expect and demand from them the highest standards of responsibility, accountability, respect for the rule of law, and respect for you, the taxpayers, whose money pays their bills and feeds them and shelters them. How can they manage and administer people below them in the public service? How can they act as trustees for our best interests? How can they or the government expect respect from a country when we hear talk about good governance and integrity in public life, while the majority of them, the top people, are spitting in the face of the law. I say that all who have failed to file their declarations, starting at the very highest levels, should be charged and prosecuted by the DPP and dismissed from the public service. Time to clean up the country. If the government is serious about cleaning up, then it must do so now and start within. But is the Drew administration and is the Integrity Commission up to this challenge? If they are, then they will have to stand aside and let the DPP or the special prosecutor do his work. Finally, on good governance, the procurement process in this country is a mess, totally inadequate and vulnerable to corrupt practices. The government has to fix this now. For starters, I can tell you that the Public Works Department approves contractors without doing full due diligence on them. And it's not only the Public Works Department. There are other government entities, including Social Security, which do business with people presenting as companies, but their companies have been struck from the record at the Financial Services Regulatory Commission. In other words, they're presenting as companies, but those companies do not exist. That is fraud, and they're defrauding the government and whoever else they're doing business with and getting away with it, with the government including with social security so who is up to the challenge to put a stop to these things in 2024 and there's much more that i can say but i think i've said enough for now will the government and will we the people of st kitts and nevis allow these challenges to break us or will we be strong and use them to break records in 2024for joining us on KN Whoop. I am Alvarine Cable, affectionately known as Bright Eyes. Have a wonderful day.